Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExvilAutomation.com and this is part 4 of our Understanding Appium video series. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 3 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So, Appium sessions. In Appium, all the commands, the client commands, remember in part 3, we were discussing about the client libraries and the client libraries used to send the commands in the form of JSON wire protocol to the Appium server. So these commands are executed in the context of what is called as a session. And this session is very, very important in Appium since each and every request or each and every test that you make is maintained using these Appium sessions. Well, the client initiates a session with a server in a way specific to each libraries but they all end up sending a post session request to the server with a JSON object called as the desired capabilities object. At this point, the server will start up the automation session and respond with a session ID, which is used for sending further communication. If you think this theory is very, very boring, just skip it. But we'll discuss more about that in upcoming videos of this video series. But this is very important to understand how Selenium actually works because this Appium session is what makes the Appium to perform the operation well enough, right? So Appium's desired capabilities, what is it actually? Well, the desired capabilities are sent by the client to server via JSON object by requesting the automation session we need as we already discussed about this a lot in part three of this video series. These desired capabilities are found in the links below. So there is a link actually, and there are a lot of links available in the upcoming slides of this video series. And these desired capabilities, it what make the automation session to happen in Appium. Well, Appium server capability. If you see this capability, the Appium server itself has some capability, a object. It's actually a JSON object. So if you see the JSON object under the hood, what it has, it, it has something called as automation name. And this is nothing but which automation engine to use, whether Appium or Cylindroid. So based on the version of application you are targeting, the automation engine uses Appium or Cylindroid. Similarly, for the platform name, it can be a iOS or Android and Firefox, whatever it can be. So Appium server has to somehow understand what request is actually coming from the client and which mobile platform it actually has to perform the operation to. So this desired capability is what is the information for the Appium server to perform the further operation. Similarly, it has something called platform version, device name, app, all those things which you can actually find in the Appium.io website itself. Right? Similarly, the Android only capability is also available in Appium. And this capability or app activity, app package, app wait activity, app app wait package, device ready, timeout, and all those things which you can find from this link, right? So this is actually very important because you will be using some of these desired capabilities in your programs as well. So before starting an actual test in upcoming videos of this video series, which we are going to discuss, we will first set the desired capabilities. Once we set all the desired capabilities required for our test, to set our environment ready for the execution of our test, we need to use some of these capabilities in our test, right? But not all, most of the time, but we'll use some of these Android capabilities as a mandatory field as well. Similarly, iOS operating system also has its own capability. It can be a calendar format, bundle ID, launch timeout, location service enabled, location service authorized, auto accept alert etc and it's lot actually you can find from this link so this is how appium works with the desired capabilities and session so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day